They say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. Okay? If you don't know where you're going, any road will do. Well, today's gospel reminds us of where we are going. The transfiguration reminds us of the dignity and the destiny of every human person. Like rich or poor, simple or learned, born and unborn, we all have this destiny to be, be transfigured in glory, um, to, to share the glory of Christ. C.S. Lewis says, I never met a mere mortal. Okay? I never met a mere mortal. And what he means is that we're all called to immortality. We're all destined for immortality, either to be eternally transfigured in glory with the saints in heaven or, or to be forever disfigured by damnation in horror. Um, I never met a mere mortal. Okay. Uh, Franz Kafka is, uh, wrote uh, author, existentialist, and for most of his life, an atheist. He wrote a short story called Metamorphosis. And in that short story, the main character is called Gregor Samsor. And one day, Gregor wakes up and finds himself transformed into a huge cockroach. He says he felt good for nothing but to be swept under the rug. And the point is that without God, we never see our true destiny. Like, we have the potential be to transfigured with the angels and the saints toward God or to be downwardly transformed, metamorphosized toward the level of creatures, animals, lesser beings. Okay. But, like, and, and so in Christ, we, we see our true destiny. So today the church reminds us, keep your eyes on the goal. Like one moral theologian says, in, in theology, last things come first. Like, if you're taking a trip, the first thing you have to know is where you're going. Okay. If you're going on a family vacation, the first thing before you leave the house is you have to know where you're going. Because you need to, to plan your, your, your trip. Like we say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. They say that when two people get married, uh, that they're given this love, this gift of marital love for each other. And in that gift, they see the transfigured image of the other person. And the vocation of marriage is to lead that other person to that transformation in Christ, to, to be transfigured ourselves, but also to lead others to that transformation in Christ. Okay? That's our essential vo vocation. Okay? To, to be transfigured in Christ, um, um, as well as in the vocation of marriage to raise up new saints for heaven. Um, let's see, and let's see, um, Mother Teresa always remembered that her vocation was not to be successful in this world. Like she said, God puts us in this world not to be successful, but to be faithful. Like, um, some people fear failure more than sin, but worldly success was never the goal of Mother Teresa. She wasn't in the world to win the war on poverty, okay? but she was, uh, she was here to, uh, to lead others to Christ and, and in the process to be transfigured herself. Um, the worldly seeks success, not sanctity. But the saints are, are, have this fundamental peace about them, this, this supernatural peace, this surprising serenity. Uh, the saint knows that Christ's kingdom prevails more through prayer and suffering than through human activity. Okay. Christ's kingdom comes more through prayer and suffering than through human activity. Like they say, if you want to reach a supernatural destiny, you have to use a supernatural means to get there. Okay? It takes a supernatural means to reach a supernatural end. Transformation in Christ, heaven, is a supernatural end. And it takes a supernatural means to get there. And during the season of Lent, the church arms us with those spiritual weapons. Uh, 
prayer, fasting, almsgiving. It reminds us of that destiny, but it gives us the means, the arms we need to, to reach that end. They say, those only are defeated in battle who throw down their weapons. Those only are defeated in battle who throw down their weapons. We say this, this battle of charity is a war. Okay? Um, father love, mother love is a, is a war. They say the road from paradise lost to paradise regained is soaked in blood. And at the very center the story is a, of the cent, story is a cross, a, a symbol of conflict if ever there was one. All progress in the spiritual life is the work of God in us. Okay? That the history of mankind is that God brings to naught all attempts to save ourselves. That was like the, um, the Tower of Babel. Okay? God brings null to nullity. God nullifies all our attempts to save ourselves. Um, but it's, it's his work exclusively that, that transfigures us. We sometimes imagine that we could, um, we could convert people if we give the perfect apologetic, the perfect explanation of the faith, or if we could just implement the right program in a parish, then people would respond and be converted. If we could find the right avenue of appeal to youth, then they would come to church. Um, if we could just say the mag magic word, okay, then people would be transformed. But we have no more power to change hearts than we do to bring po Pinocchio to life, to bring the wooden puppet uh, to life. Okay. Um, so like we say, it takes a supernatural means to reach a supernatural end. And today, this, this season, it calls the church calls us to arms, um, to, to use all our efforts, our strength, uh, our body and soul to, to focus on that victory. T.S. Eliot defines the Christian in life as a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything. Okay? The price is everything, 100%. Okay? Mary's fiat. Okay. Um, so in this season of Lent, we try to uh, surrender mind, body, soul to prayer, fasting, works of charity, okay? that we might reach that end of transfiguration, that, that supernatural end of, of transformation in Christ.